that means whatever I want to explain will be on this. You can only see I'm only recording this tab. This tab, okay. If I leave there, you will not be able to say anything. So, guys, um, this is for the formula for binomial distribution. Take note. Any of these three, take note of the formulas. That's how we start. All right. And then, guys, since you've um understood how the formula looks like, what's the next thing to consider? The next thing you need to consider is what we call the mean. What is the mean of binomial distribution? You must know it. What is the variance? You must know it as well. And what is the worst standard deviation? Those three things you need to understand is clearly. The mean of a binomial distribution is always represented as number of trials or number of sample space times the probability. Take note. And sometimes this mean, they might not ask you to find mean. They might decide to use another word entirely. Is it that you use the word mean or we use the word expectation? Please take note, guys. Take note. Expectation. Or sometimes they will just ask you to find the expected value. So if you hear this, any of these three words, just know that they want you to look for the word. They want you to calculate the value for the mean. And that is n. You know, if I say in a family of 10 and I give you the probability, so just multiply that 10 times the probability given to you in that question to get your mean. That's very simple. All these ones are just like bonus mark bonus questions so you must be able to solve that correctly without any stress now you see this variance the formula for variance is n p q and guys this q you know what q means q is failure and that's one minus probability of success so you can you can erase this q and then write it as n p times one minus p that is the variance for binomial distribution take notes you know we've not we've not tried any example at all i have my reason why i'm trying to state this one after the other so then I will now pick questions from your test, from your text exactly, and then we will now solve it, all right? So um, this is standard deviation here. Standard deviation is always, you know, you guys did math 105 now. You remember standard deviation is always square root of variance, not even when you get to the last two, since secondary school. Standard deviation is always square root of what? Variance, that's square root of what? Variance, and variance is what? Variance is already N, P, Q. Or you can see it this way, or you also see it as N, P, times 1 minus p because q is 1 minus probability of what success where q is probability of what failure now guys listen attentively you also need to take note of one thing here whereby do you know that these three formulas they are the same these three formulas they are all the same okay whether you write q or 1 minus p or you write this as n and x inside the full bracket they are still saying the same thing they are all the same no difference but guys do you know that there is a particular condition whereby if you use this formula for some questions <laughs> you might not really see your answer in the option and if honest thing you might use this you might use this formula for some questions and then you will see the answer and that that answer you got i'm very sure that is the wrong thing the reason is because the probability formula i have there we always call this formula here, any of these three, we always call it uh, the probability of success of binomial. I think my network goes off. Can you guys hear me? Okay, it's back now. So guys, um, this particular formula here is for success. It's for binomial. Let me just put it that way. It's for binomial success. Take note, guys. And I will tell you what that binomial success means. This particular formula here is for binomial success, whereby... You always have this as p raised to the power of x. x come first before you now have n minus x. That is for success. We also have binomial failure, guys. You have binomial failure. <laughs> so you need to understand that clearly. I think if I'm able to give, if I give you the, for, the, the formula for that binomial failure now, then that means we are, we are true with binomial. I've given you the condition, I've given you the formulas, and I've stated the mean, variance, and standard deviation. And we are done with binomial in that regard. So the next form to just do is to try questions. Let's solve questions from your test. We pick it from your test. All right. So um, I don't want to waste too much of your time. So let's say, let's quickly um, take that of binomial failure. How does that look like? For binomial failure, you have it as probability of an event X, which is equals to the outcome of that event, such that we have it to be equal to, we have this to be equal to what? N combination X. Instead of having p raised to the power of x, you will now swap, you swap it for failure, you swap it. This comes here for failure while this goes to the other side. 
that's how the probability of failure looks like. But you'll be wondering, how will you be able to detect when to use that binomial success and when to use binomial failure? Don't worry, guys. I will show you. NCX, then T is the power of N minus X. You see that I've swapped, I've swapped that index, the power that you have on that P and Q. So whatever you have here, guys, this formula here is for binomial failure. Only few knows about this, this um, concept. Okay? This binomial failure, guys. Binomial failure. Only few of you guys, we actually take notes. We actually know what's happening here. And how will you be able to detect when to use these two formulas? Because sometimes you feel like, ah, this binomial, eh? <sighs> you feel like, I don't really understand the concept. So I will do it. I will never even see my answer. <laughs> Whereas you have been using this formula up here to solve that kind of question. So you actually end up getting an answer. And then you feel like, let me go and check the option. And you don't see the answer. You now feel like, what's happening? And the funniest thing, eh, you people will not really think that, okay, you're not even think in that regards that okay let me just swap it because you don't really understand the concept of how binomial works if you look at the questions very well you notice that what they ask you to look for it might be the binomial failure whereas you are using the binomial success to solve that question and i'm very sure you will not end up seeing your answer in the option but if you use this formula at times it will surely work and sometimes if you use binomial failure if you use this formula here and then use this formula here the answer you got for this one for this binomial success and the answer you got for the binomial failure you still see the two answers in the option. So you must be very, very sure of the right formula to use, whether this second part or for this first part. So guys, please take note. And I said something. I said you can only use this binomial when your n is not large. That is, that range for n is always from 0 to 30. Let me just put it that way, guys. You can never see it in any test rule. But based on uh, these questions I've solved so far, based on binomial distribution, the questions I've solved so far, guys, the range for binomial is only 0 to 30. If it goes beyond 30, if it goes beyond 30, guys, don't use binomial. Just think straight to poison. Have I made myself clear? Are we still following? Are we together, guys? Can you all hear me? All right. All right, good. So the range for n is always 0 to 30. Always take note of that. Immediately when your n moves more than 30, if it goes beyond that 30, guys, go and use poison straight up poison and for you to use poison you must know that okay don't worry you know i've not reached there so i don't want to i don't want to mix it up with this so let me just hold on there what do you say okay i can't really hear you i think somebody said something now who is that who was that all right so guys yeah, let's just continue so um let's i want to pick a particular question so i have or do you guys have any question by name sharp 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 if you have any questions so yeah now quickly give us but I, I want to quickly check the screen record i have here do you guys have any question on binomial distribution let's solve it together any question guys are you guys there okay so so I, I I have seen some, so let me just go ahead and okay. Question number five. So is a video I'm trying to skip and then look for questions related to binomial. Guys, I've seen one particular question here which says so it's very simple. It says, example, determine the mean of a binomial distribution, all right, with n equals to 2 and p equals to 3 over 4. See, this one is very simple. If you come across this kind of question, just close the eyes and pick the correct option. Option A, 1.2. B, 2.1. C, 1.8. And D, 1.5. What's the mean of a binomial distribution without, without schooling? I don't want to school up. I already gave you the mean, right? So all these things are just bonus things, bonus question. If you want to look for mean of a binomial distribution, what's the mean of a binomial distribution, guys? Should, should I just go ahead and write it? Or you guys, we, I need somebody to, to tell me the mean. 
anybody nice that's nice thanks for that so what is n n is given to us as two times three p is given to us as what three over four so we simply implies that two year one two year two or you still want to be, do you still want to do something like this in the exam if i really i wouldn't able to even cut because straight up looking at the screen i'll just press two times three over four directly because the time that you have used the time that you you used to write mean is equals to mp you wasted like five seconds to write this in fact sometimes you can use 10 seconds to write this before you know it before you cancel this one now you use another 10 seconds now you've wasted like 20 seconds whereas a smart guy inside that is inside the exam can easily just he knows what the mean is and they have seen the n equals to two and p equals to three you can just easily picture that and then input these values into the into his calculator and then you notice that the person will just get 1.5 straight up whereas you are still there forming scholar nobody no no <laughs> you know they are not marking based on your own workings it's actually based on your final answer so that's just what cbt is all right so you don't need to write all these formulas you need to be smart two times three over four straight up on your calculator you don't need to show all this you know i'm actually explaining that as well i'm trying to write everything out so don't go and do like that in the exam tomorrow all right so um two year one two year two so i'm left with three over two i was three over two that is what 1.5 you know two goes in three one times dot you mean that one Two in one is impossible. Put zero, two in ten is five. So I think that's that's for that. So let me quickly find that question. Oh, this this one is this one is very, very simple. I have another question. I think this one I'm looking at is for another type. Guys, please hold on. Guys, okay. okay um this question i'm seeing here is just based on coins and i think that is under random variable i will not consider that i'm still looking for more questions okay Guys, I've seen a particular question here. So let me just take my time to write this out clearly. It says, given that four out of every 20 students are not good in probability theory we we'll stop now if eight students are selected at random now if you guys are following now what is the probability that they will contain exactly three students? So the options are here, 0 0.355. Let's quickly solve this first. But I'll make sure I write the options as well. I have 0 0.3355, comma, option B, 0 0.767969, and D, 0 0.1468. So that's option C, rather. Option D, okay. I can actually see that too. 2936. So, guys, pay full attention to this. If you know, you are not really familiar with by the distribution clearly now do you know that looking at this clearly now if i ask you what is the number of sample space in this question is it 20 students or is it eight 
<laughs> because now if you look at this character, they say given that four out of every 20 students are not good in probability theory. Okay, they are not good in probability theory. Just four out of every 20. Do you know that this is showing me the value of my probability? That shows me four out of if I if I if I ask you to, to pick two out of five, do you know do you know what that means? Pick two out of five. That is fraction for you. Just write it as two divides five. Do you understand that logic? So here in this case, whereby you have given that four out of twenty students, so that means that gives you the result of your probability instantly. Just write your p is equals to four. I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Who is that? Okay. Um, Oluwato for me is that you? Abdullah, can you hear me? Abdullah, can you hear me? I think it's for me. Okay. What up before? Can I, can I, can I, were you able to hear me before? Abdullah? Uh, maybe it's from your end. Oluwato for me, can you hear me? Oluwato for me, are you there? Hello? You know what? I think it's from your own end. Just try to end the call and then rejoin. Alright? Okay. It seems... Okay, she left already. Let's just continue. Oh, Oluwato for me. Can you still hear me like this? You can't eat. You, you can't hear me, right? Maybe it's your phone. Maybe it's from your own name. I'd like... I'd like, I yes, maybe it's on your side. All right, that's fine. That's fine. You can. Fame boy, I wish it together. Fame boy, are you there? Anyways, um, given that four out of, all right, all right. Given that four out of every 20 students, that means, I just said it now that that represents um like a proportion like four out of every 20 that's four over 20 and if you have four over 20 that simply that simply impl implies that you can easily use this fraction for probability because probability is always less than less than one because four over 20 will give you something like 0, 0.0 something or so 0 0.02 i don't know all right so this four out of every 20 gives you your p straight up and not good in probability theory are not good you need to be very careful of that statement not that are good is this seems like a failure but now i'm using p to represent it but that's not the problem okay just hold on okay i have four out of every 20 students are not good in probability theory that's the first proposition in that question okay i'll still call it p all right so if eight students are selected at random so that means my own concern is this eight student that will give me my n value so if if you go and use this 20 yeah, your own. Normally, I know that every, I think everything is 20. Okay, every 20 students are not good in probability theory. I think the number of sample space here is 20. Well, let's see how it goes. But this particular statement here changes everything entirely, whereby we are now selecting each student at random. So that means I'll just advise you to pick n directly. Your n, your small n is 8. Straight off. That's what you selected. This n is a sample, sample that you pick. I mean, now you actually selected 8 samples from that 20 students. So your N is eight, this use eight as that you got, use eight in that you got. And then the question now says, what is the probability that they will contain exactly three students? Exactly three students. I think I said X is what we are looking for. The outcome that we are looking for in this question says, what is the probability that they will contain three, exactly three? If it's exactly three, guys, use three. I'm very sure most of you guys, you always find this thing very, very confusing. Exactly three, you now have any problem. X is three. But when this thing is being changed, when this word is being changed, then there will be a problem. Whereby, we always have three different statements. Even more than three, self. You always have, they always use the word at least. Sometimes they use the word at most. At times, they use the word not more than. But the, the, the common what they use at all time is this is this two at least and at most if it's exactly three that means your x is three straight up then you can go ahead and solve but if it is at least 
three, what are you going to do? So I don't want to, I don't want to do that now. Let's answer this question. Then I will now come back and do for at least three, and that's most three. So you see how it works. So guys, um, these are the values that I have. These are the uh, parameters that I've been able to obtain from the word problem given to us in that question. So therefore, by formula, your probability of x equals to what is the outcome you are looking for? Exactly three students. X equals to three. That means this small x is three. So I have n combination x, p raised to the power of x, then one minus p raised to the power of n minus x. Now why did I use this formula for binomial success? I will tell you. I don't think you can easily see it from this kind of question. But I have n here, n is eight combination. What's your x? X is three. All right. This p here is four over twenty. Then I'll raise it to what to x, which is three, and I'll have this as one negative four over twenty. Then this n here, this n here is um eight. Then minus x is three. So guys, you know we use our n as eight, and I'm very sure if you do that, you are supposed to have a final answer here. And if it doesn't pop out, I'm not sure whether that twenty. If you, write, if you go and use 20 and then you see the answer, then that means there is something wrong. Because looking at this statement, too, if a student has selected at random, we need to consider that it that the sample you are considering, not 20 itself. Okay? Uh, but let's just say it goes. Let's say it goes. Um, now that we have this now, guys, you don't need to use your hand to solve this one at all. Just use your calculator straight up. All you need to do is to use your calculator from here. I don't know if you are with your if you are with your natural display calculator, you can do that now. You can easily do that now. Um, I can still show you that. I have one video on my YouTube channel that I explain how to use calculator to solve this question. But if you are with your natural display calculator, just press eight and then press shift and divide button. I think that's where the combination sign is. I repeat, press eight and then press shift and divide button. Then you see 8C displaying on your screen right now. And then press 3. Guys, you need to take note. Immediately when you have input 8 combination 3 on your calculator, remember to always put times. Say, if you do not put times or more, that calculator will give you the wrong thing entirely. Be very, very careful. Make sure you put times. If you do not put times, do you know what, do you know what that calculator will program for you? The calculator will program 8 combination 3 under this three here, this three that I actually have down here, calculator will program three times the whole of what you have in this place. That is three times four over 20 is power of three, then times one minus. That's what it's going to program for you. So you need to be very careful. Immediately when you write it, immediately when you press eight combination three, remember to put times. Okay? Remember to insert times after the eight C three displaying on your screen. And then you cannot go ahead and open a bracket, then you press box over box. I believe you are familiar with that. And then you input four here, you insert 20 here, then you raise it to three. You know, you know how to raise power now on that calculator. Then for this one, you don't need to put times, but you see this first one is very, very important. I beg, it's very, very important. But for the rest, you might not really need that. Just open bracket and then if you do that, what are you going to have, guys? So I want to do that from here. I don't have the calculator here with me, but I have the app. So I want to quickly use the app to, to, um, to get the final result for this. And let's see how it's going to be. 4 over 20, I'm on it. Use the power of 3 times 1 minus 4 over 20. Then raise to the power of 8 minus 3. So guys, I have it as, after pressing this, I put this time, so I inserted these times. I have it as 0 0.1468. But if I do not put the times, I want to delete the times now. I want to delete these times. I don't want to put it. If I do not put the times and I press equal to, do you know what I got? I got 0.34959. Can you answer they're not the same thing? If you do not put the times, you have this result here. But if you put the times, you have this answer. Guys, if you put the times, this is the correct thing. If you do not put the times, this is wrong. Please take notes. All right? So, guys, ah, wow. That's... You have blocked them. I think the answer is showing. This option C. Option C is correct for that question. That's nice. What is this? Okay. Guys, option C is correct. So, do you have any questions before I move straight to the at least and at most? 
Can you guys see me? Hello, anybody? Is there anybody there? I hope you understand. I hope you got my explanation clearly, loud and clear, right? All right, that's nice, guys. Let me just tell you one thing because you might be wondering that uh, we are still on binomial. You know, I listed five different. Things. We are still on binomial, and there are still more. You don't, you don't, you don't have to be scared. Go back to more binomial poison. are very easy. They follow the same pattern. All right. The only thing is just that you just need to cram the formula for poison. Know the mean for poison. The, like, let me just read this way. They follow the same pattern. It's just that it's their formula that is different. All right. So if they ask you to do for exactly three, it's still the same process. So go back to more binomial or more toku. That's all. So guys, um, I've explained this and we, are, we already have our answer as 0 0.1468. But what if the question did not say exactly three? Exactly three simply means x is equal to three and that's all. But if it is at least three, what are you going to do, guys? So I want to rub this off. Let me try to clear this off now. Come here. So guys, um, I have, if I want to change this, let's say, I want to, I want to change this exactly three okay let's say the question is now at least three at least three students which simply implies that okay my p3 remain as four out of every 20 students right my number of sample space is the eight student i select at random i'm not considering 20 guys don't even use 20 because you've had because the question, yeah, yeah, you are seeing four out of every 20 students. You might think the population is 20. And be very careful. You are using the sample. Normally, in probability, in probability distribution, in probability as a whole, capital N, I think my board is having an issue. Hold on, guys. I'm expecting the. Well, let me try to. Let me still paint for me. Normally, um, under probability, eh, majorly under probability, we always have N. Capital N. This capital N stand as the um, um how will I put it? The population. So this stand as the population, the population value in that question. Okay, the population value. All right. But is this small letter N? Okay, I think my pen is back now. One moment, the tire shall I? Hold on, please. So you see, uh, for okay, under probability, we always have our capital N. Capital N stand as the population, the population value. Okay, population value, blah blah. blah. But small letter N stand as the sample, the sample itself. So this N is what we are, Abby, you, you writing formula for binomial, did you write capital letter N, C, X? No, no, that's not what you are, that's not what you are considering. I think that is where, for hypergeometric distribution, that is where you need that capital N and the small N. For hypergeometric distribution, you notice that the formula has capital N, it also has, it, it also has small N as well. So that means if I want to relate to this kind of question with hypergeometric, that means this capital N will stand as 20, that small N will stand as 8. Okay, that's why hypergeometric. That's how hypergeometric works. But for binomial, you are considering the sample. I have my reason why I'm repeating this, so, so take notes, because you might not see exactly the same. This you might not see the same question in exam, and you might see the same thing. But if you if you decide to twist that question, you can easily detect how the question, how you can actually provide solution to that question. So understanding matters, guys. Understanding matters. You need to understand the question very well. Okay, um, I have my N as 8, and I have my P as 4 over 20. We don't have any issue with that. But my concern is this X, which, the, which we actually have it as at least 3. Will I still use 3? No, no, I can't use 3. It's not allowed. I can't. Because they said at least 3. That means I don't have, I don't have just one single value. I have other values. And what are those other values? At least 3. I don't know if you can actually interpret that. At least 3. Where is it coming from? It's just as if, okay, let's say um, we are many in this. Let me check this with you. We are many. We are 11, okay? We are all 11 in numbers, as you can see. Check it. Look at this. We are all 11 in numbers. So the funniest thing is, if I decide to give you a test, if I give all of you a particular test, and I say, okay, this test I want to give you now is 8 marks. 
it carries eight marks. And then I now say that if you score at least three, I will not beat you. I will not flog you. Okay. If you score at least three, I will not flog you. So can you give me the values for that at least three? Like what are those? Okay. If you now take the test and then you now score what? If you score what? What are those things that you are going to score? What are those values that you are going to score that will make me not to flog you? All right. Now I already gave you a condition. If you score at least three, then that means I will not flog you. And what are those values? That means if you score three, I will not flog you. If you score four, I will not flog you. If you score five, I will not flog you. That means the range from three to eight simply implies at least three. It's coming from the IS mark eight over eight. Then it comes down to at least three. So that means starting from three to eight, that is what I want to consider. That's for at least three. What if I ask you, what is at least five? And I notice that the highest range of that sample is eight. I'm considering eight max. So that means I will just reduce it okay from eight to five that is at least five no my reasoning but if you want to translate it to you but i think that's the best way to quickly if you're a yoruba guy or a yoruba lady you can easily detect that if if i ask you to interpret this in yoruba now at least three what does that mean okereju bameta okereju wani three students so kilo me out of how many students omu eight sample students right omu eight set as a sample what they consider at least three students so that means you can decide to pick five students, you can take seven students, you can take eight students as your observation, or you take four, or you take three as well. But can you take two? To my normal two, that does not really make any sense because they already gave you a condition. Okay, you met alumani. So we don't need to buy carry you three in You get my point. So that is just normal reasoning. So um, I just said at least three, and it's coming from eight students. That means I want to solve for three, four, five, six, seven and eight guys that means you need to solve for you need to do the one for three wash a lot of advance just like okay what we did previously was what yes we've done the one for three we got 0 0.1 for six eight now that's for three you take by a corner you know? then you still need to come back to that formula again you start afresh again and then you now use when s is equals to four you get another answer for that you start afresh again and then you now use when x is equals to five Imagine is that what you are, is that what you just go and do inside exam? Or? It will really take your time. You solve for three, solve for four, calculate the one for five, for six, for seven, and for eight. Then all those answers you now accumulate them. You had all of them together to get the formal the final answer for at least three students, and that's going to take a lot of time. And how can you actually do that? That's why I told um famous boy Abi, what's that guy? What's that guy name? Say, let me check again. That fame boy guy, that's why I told him that he's only calculator that will save you in this in this regard. This one year. What you just do on that calculator is I don't know whether if you check that your natural display calculator very well, you will see something like summation sign under the on button. Something like this. You will see the summation sign under the on button. So to 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 display to let if you want to display this on your screen, just press shift and that button that you have under the switch on button. Okay. Then it, it automatically display as x equals to something here and then something up. This are you this is going to display on the screen. So, guys, you know, I want to solve for three to eight. It starts from three, it stops at eight. The easiest way, like the fastest way to do this is okay. I want to start from <coughs> x start from three. You put three in the first in the box that you actually have below that summation sign, and then the highest is stop at what eight, which means sum all the results for x starting from 3 to 8. Is that not what I want to do initially? That's what I want to do. So, um, looking at this now, what is going on? Can you guys hear me? No, see it for you. I just don't see for nice life. Hello, can you guys hear me? Hola, you can hear there. Hello. Abdullah, can you hear me? Fin boy, can you hear me?
Hello guys, sorry for that. I had a network glitch. Can you hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Like, uh, Abdullah, can you hear me? I had a network glitch. So this was so uh are you guys with your if you are with your natural display can we try you need to try this now? You can meet now, Abdullah. You can meet. So um, if you are with that, you calculator, whatever you have to do now, the reason that will save you from this stress, you calculating three separate, then come back and calculate four. Just use this summation sign, and then it starts three down here, three goes to it, that's all. Then after that, okay, what, what is the formula for, um, remember the formula for um, binomial distribution? That is N combination X, P is to the power of X, then 1 minus P, raised to the power of N minus X. So guys, this is what you are going to do. All right, so instead of you know you can't really type all this, you need to insert the values. I already have this one sorted out. X starts from three to eight. All right, so this n is what n is eight. You now press eight immediately after the summation. After pressing eight here, after writing three and you input eight as well. So this n you has eight combination. This x, you don't need to change that x. Don't put, you know, you don't know the exact x keeps changing, so just leave it as x. So, do you know how to type x on calculator? It's very easy, just press um, your alphabet button and then close bracket button. I think that is where x is, if I'm not mistaken. You can check it out. Press the alpha button, that alpha button is beside that shift button. Okay, press that alpha button and then this close bracket button. Then you see this displaying like this. You see that. So I have my P here. My probability is what? The probability is 4 over 20. You write it as 4 over 20. And then you use it to X. And then you write one negative four over twenty. You can type this. You know you know how to type x, right? You know what to do. You press that alphabet button, and then you, you press um, the close bracket button as well. So for this one, you have n. N is eight. Leave this one as x as well. So immediately when you press equal to, it will give you the final answer straight up. Just take your time to press this correctly. It will give you the final answer for what you want to do for three, for four, for five, for six, for seven, and for eight, and then you adding them together. Okay, it will give you the final result straight up. So I don't know, is there anybody that can actually try that for us? Has anybody tried that? Hello? Have you guys tried it? Can you guys hear me? Remember to put times here. Remember to put times there, remember? Okay, who is that? Uh, somebody just raise nobody. Do you guys have any question? So, like I said, has anybody tried it? Can you guys hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Hello, can you guys hear me? I press this on calculator and I have it at 0 0.20. Wow. Guys, do you have any questions based on what I've explained so far from here? Do you guys have any question before I proceed? Hello? Are you guys following?
Walai emi kan yemi. Walai nka kan yemi. Walai nka kan yemi. Hello, can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Shidera, can you hear me? Abdullah, can you hear me? Abdullah, can you hear me? Okay, I need, I need to share my screen again. So basically, I said, do you have any questions based on what I've explained here? In the case of, okay, if you want to look for at least three, and then you need to calculate for when X is three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in that regards, are you, are you going to solve for 3 separately to get this 0 0.1468 and then come back again and solve for 4 and then do the same thing for 5 and 6 and 7 and 8? That's going to take you a lot of stress and it's going to take you a lot of time. So to be on the safer side, I explained how to use calculators to do that. I see it here. I've explained. So I said, do you have any issue with what I've explained here? Do you have any questions to ask on how I got this 0 0.2031? If you put this on your calculator, you have this result and that is the correct answer. Even though if you do it individually, you still have this, the result as 0 0.2031. So do you guys have any questions? Can you see my screen now? Shidera, can you see my screen now? So I said, do you guys, can I see, can I proceed? Like, I need to confirm whether you guys understood what I've explained here. Fame boy, you said you have a question, right? Please feel free to talk. If you can't say anything, just say something, please. I need to be sure so I can, so I can proceed with the class. Abdullah, can you hear me? Online, you can go ahead and say something. I can hear you. Or meet your mic and say something. Now, online guys, is lines. Okay. I I said, do you guys have any question based on what I've explained so far? Can I proceed with the class with the explanation or other? Online, you can say something. It seems you have issue with your mic. 
Okay, go ahead. If you ask question, go ahead, please. Go ahead, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. Go ahead, please. The network is breaking. Yes. Yes, the, prob the, prob the probability you have as 4 over 20, that's all you put in the bracket. That, that, that 4 over 20, that's all you put in the bracket. Is that not what you are trying to say? Can you hear me? You said after, uh, after you've input the summation, okay, then you type 8, right? And then followed by combination, and then followed by x, and then followed by x, and you must put that times. So in this bracket, you have to insert the probability given to you in that question. Insert the probability given to you in that question, and then you write x again. Exactly, and then leave it as one minus one minus four over twenty again, and then put it as raise it to eight minus x, and then just press equal to straight up to give you this answer. Instead of it going to the stress of doing it individually. So let me try it with the class, please. You can you can mute your mic now. So um, you can mute your mic now. So the other way around, you can actually the other way around to right. the other way around to do this now. If you don't want to use this summation stuff, if you don't want to use this summation, you can do it the other way around. Whereby you know that okay, x always normally x ranges from no student to how many of them to eight of them. Seven eight. To eight of them it ranges from zero to eight initially it must start from zero from no student to eight students right so then you are considering at least at least eight that means you are supposed to calculate all these things individually and then sum the result together to get the final answer for at least three if you don't want to do it individually and you don't want to use your calculator the other way around is just take one minus the probability of when x is equals to you know the complement these are the values for the complement, the one that you not pick at all, or the one that is left out. So you do for 0, 1, 2, and that's all. So that means this one minus will stand separately entirely somewhere. I'm not this okay. Essential to one, I'm not going to work with plug and see And then bring my charger. So, guys, um, that's all. That's all. System is okay. So I have one I have one minus probability of x is start from 0, 1, 2. That is the values that are not among the list for that at least three. Okay? So that's all you do. So that means in this case now you are going to take one minus. You open a big bracket, you calculate the probability for when x is equals to zero, then plus probability of when x is equals to one, then plus another probability of when x is equals to two. But still, guys, do you know the best one to use? This is the best method to use. Just use a calculator to get this straight up rather than going through all this stress. And the funniest thing is, I'm very sure those lecturers, if you don't want to ask questions on binomial, they don't like asking for exactly, exactly what they like. You know, they don't like asking for exactly three. They want that you just get three and then that's all. They will put at least, the more they used to ask most is at least, one of my big age, at least two, at least five, at least this, at least that. So if you, to be on the safer side, guys, Make sure you use this calculator to get your finances straight up. And if, the funniest thing is, you might see three questions on binomial or two, or even four, say, at times. Same thing goes with poison. You can see another four or maybe three. Imagine you seeing.
So, um, okay, I think I'm back now. Let me just rejoin. Hold on, please. Uh, the meeting code is what was the meeting code? VWU TGV YMG. So, guys, I'm about to join you now. I have to end the call from here. So, Abdullah, I notice you just raised up your hand. Abdullah, do you have any questions before I continue? All right. I, yes, that's, that's what I'm trying to, as you can see, I'm also doing the recording from here. It's really nice. It's, it's even continuing from there, even though my system went off, but it picks up from where it stopped. So, I'm still taking the record for the class, yeah. Uh, okay, guys. Can can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? So this was the um the alternative for that at least to be taking one minus the complement part. That is, we we'd not use zero one. We'd not include zero one two in the at least three. So I think this will also take your time, but it is preferably you use this particular concept here. All right, and um, I also explained at most. This is what I was trying to explain before. For at most three, that means I want to consider x starting from zero, one, two, three. Open the meta that's zero to three. All right, and then instead of you calculating the probability for when x is equals to zero, plus probability of when x is equals to one, same thing for two, same thing for three. You really take your time instead of doing it that way. Just go ahead and take the summation of x starts from 0. It starts from 0, it ends at 3. And then you have 8 combination x, that is n combination x. Then what is your p? Your probability is 4 over 20 in that question, raised to the power of x. And then you have 1 minus 4 over 20, raised to the power of um, n minus x. So then you have that. So looking at this expression here, then you can just go ahead and... Um, and press your calculator exactly the way you see it here. Type it on calculator. And then it will give you your final answer straight. So that's for at most and for at least. So guys, please take note of what I've explained. That is how you are going to do it for the other distributions as well. So for the Poisson distribution, guys. So I'll be very, very fast about this. For the Poisson distribution, the formula is always given to us as probability of x equals to the outcome of that event. And it's always equals to an average. And that average, we always call it lambda. We denote it as lambda. It's a parameter. Okay? We denote it as lambda. Lambda. Okay? It's a Greek letter. Just like how we have alpha. Alpha, beta, gamma. So, lambda. You don't, you, you, you see lambda now, you might feel like, ah, what is this? Clearly, by. <laughs> it's just like a parameter, right? Just take notes. And I will tell you what it means, okay? Lambda raised to the power of x, exponential, raised to the power of negative lambda, all over x factorial. Guys, this is the formula for Poisson. You must cram it now. There's no time. You must know it now. Right now, I'm not using any textbook to, to explain to you guys. I can still tell you the guys formula for Poisson. And I don't need the top. I don't I have done it then. So you guys need it. So you are expected to find all means to cram this formula. All right? So you need it. I don't need it. Okay? So, um, I don't know how you can actually cram this, but just taking that the formula is lambda is power of x, e is power of negative lambda, all over x factorial. I believe this is not the first time you're hearing factorial. You've done that in um, Math 105. Yes, you've done that in Math 105. So, um, what is lambda? Lambda simply means average. When I say average, you know what that means? Mean. Is that clear? When I say average, it means mean. All right? And this lambda, any value, see, this thing is not up there. Please, I make if I come out now. And um, this lambda, what I've noticed so far in lambda is that the values I always have for my lambda so far that I've seen, it always changes from 1 to 10. 
what's happening to this thing now? Can you share like... Can you guys hear me? I don't like this network. Do you this network is thing? I do like, can you hear me? Hello, can you guys hear me? I'd like, can you hear me? Seriously speaking, this is my network, eh? It's really, it's not really encouraging. I don't know what's wrong with Glue. Glue is just, I don't know, this network is very, very bad. Very, very bad. Anyway, sorry for that, guys. I had a network glitch. So, can you hear me now? I'd like. I do like, can you hear me? All right, good. So I have to, I, I don't need to share my screen. I believe you guys, can, you guys can see my screen, right? Can you see my screen? Okay, so I said this Lambda, eh, so far so good. On that point, on distribution. The value for Lambda that I've seen so far, the, the list I've seen so far is 1, and the highest I've seen so far is 10. So if you go, and, if you notice that you, you actually come across any questions, and then you now have your own lambda as twenty. Ah, now you sabi you. You don't need to do nonsense with that though. But it's better you try to check the word problem very well and interpret it correctly. So I'm giving you all these hints to know what to use or to know how. <laughs> so the range starts from one the list is one the is is 10 that i've seen so far you can you can go and try it go and check out these books you can see more than 10 but i'm not sure whether there's more than 10. i'm not sure that there's more than 10. so far so good the highest thing i've seen so far is just 10. all right in fact 10 safe is too much that 10 is too much hey my mic can you guys hear me i don't know how my mic went off can you hear me now Okay. All right, good. So I said the range for this lambda always starts from one. The list is always one. The IS is 10. In fact, 10 is too big. 10 is too big. So if you see any of your lambda, it must be within, like, you must have your lambda as two, whether three, four, five. I've seen eight before, but I've not come across this thing. 10 itself is too much. So, but let's just put it in this range. If your own lambda goes beyond this 10, ah, well, that's the shell you. Check that equation very well. And then, guys, that, that means you don't have any issue with the lambda. So that means in that question, they will just tell you where you have average of four minutes. I don't know whether Fame Boy, you've seen something like that before. Now that petrol station, that was how they asked that question. They said at an average of four minutes or so. So that average of four minutes simply implies that lambda is four. So you can't have that lambda going beyond it can never go beyond this thing. So take note. So that's for lambda for exponential. For exponential, this e. It's like we don't just call it exponential, we call it ila is ila constant. It's a constant, it's a constant value. And that constant value you must know it at all times. It's always given to us as 2.7183. You need to back bill, but I can't really remember. <laughs> I think that's the value, sure. That's you can actually check your textbook or probably. But that's not the problem. It's not a must to cram this. Okay, it's on your calculator as well. You can press E on your calculator. I think that is shift and the lean button <laughs> you see something like iron on your calculator i think that should be under the on button like three buttons sorry two buttons below the um the switch on button you will see that so you press shift and that stuff so that's all you need to do uh okay we don't have energy with the e now we don't have energy with the lambda you already know what your x is okay x is the outcome value you're actually looking for 
So guys, um, sometimes I have to pick questions on um, Poison. If you have any questions, please. I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Hey, well, I Oh. <laughs> oh, God, God, God. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> I don't know why this thing keeps... It's the network. I'm very, very sorry for that. The thing keeps refreshing for my end. That's why. Guys, can you see my can you see my screen now? I said this average here. Yeah. Can you see my screen now? Hello. Please, can you see my screen? Just say something. Anybody, can you see my screen? Can you? Wow, is the network go? It takes a lot of time before it's displays. Can you see my screen now? I'm already presenting. I don't know whether it's my network. Can you see it now? No. Still no. All right, this lambda. Seriously speaking, is the glue network go? And that's. This time I'm using this foolish network. I don't know what's going on. So annoying. Guys, um, I said this lambda is average, which is mean. And I also said we have um, that E represents Euler constant. And that Euler constant is 2.7183. And I said you don't need to cram this number. This Euler constant is on your calculator as well. You can see it on your calculator. You see it on, um, I think, two buttons below the switch on button. You see, they like shift and lean. You see, the E will surely display. You see it like this. So we don't have any issue with the X. We don't have any issue with the lambda. So now I said, um, do you have any questions on Poisson distribution? Please, if you have, kindly, <clears throat> kindly read this, read it to us now, so we can solve it together. I also have. I want to check one from here as well. Anybody? Okay, I've seen one question from here. It says the probability to be poison. The question here says That's option A. For option B, I have. See, this lecture I said, they are very, very smart. They know that this is all you are familiar with, lambda. Now they have changed it. Here. They've changed the parameters. They even miss it off with lambda as well. <laughs> so you need to be very, very smart. Don't just pick any out. Any out option. If you are sure of what you know, I believe you can easily pick the correct answer. It's only for those that are not really sure. There will be the one that will pick the thing. What's R squared doing here? Which kind of level be that? <laughs> That's even wrong. So let's check the last option. The last option is this. So guys, what's the correct answer? What's the correct option here? Anybody? Anybody? Ha! Seriously speaking, this network is muting my mic. Voila! God, God, God. Guys, can you hear me? Like this is screen. You are not seeing the screen again. That thing is fresh again. That's that's the problem. It keeps refreshing. Is that network? Is this foolish network? 
But this glow is very annoying. And the funniest thing is, it's not showing any like sign of. It's, it has 4G from here. It's showing 4G, but it's just fucking up. Don't worry, I'm, I'm, I'm about to share my screen. I don't know that you can see it. It's presenting now. You see it now. So I said, what's the correct option here? Can you see my screen now? This is the question. The Poisson probability distribution function is defined as option A, B, C, D. So guys, what's the correct answer? Can you see the screen? Hey, the button. Ah, God. All right, so what's the correct option? It says the Poisson probability distribution. Option D is correct. That's nice. Do you know why option D is correct? This symbol here is also a Greek letter, just like how you have alpha, beta, gamma. So they can use any letter, any parameter. That's why I say it's a parameter. So they can use anything. Normally in class, or maybe in your manual. I, I think in your manual, this is what they use. Right? Okay. In, in the manual, I think this was the parameter they use. They did not use this lambda, if I'm not mistaken. All right. But any of it is still correct. Either lambda, either this 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 symbol here. We always, we always, I think we pronounce that. This one is we pronounce this one as mu. M U. Mu. Okay. This this the uh pronunciation for this um parameter. And we always write it as you write U first. Then you just give it an extra vertical line. Do you start mu? So this mu here is to, is is also known as average. Okay, it's also known as average, or you call it mu. You see the same thing. So that makes it option D. Option D is correct. Lambda x. Now they did not use x. Ha! Well, this is very smart. They know how to finish you. They did not use x. They use r here. Okay, r is the um, outcome you're actually looking for. So this becomes r this becomes r you can see that then this lambda is now written as mu this one is written as mu and this one i think that's all so option d is correct guys i don't want to waste much of our time next um guys take notes on that mean on that poison mean is always equals to np as well and np is just not it's not just ordinary np on that poison mean is lambda yes or no mean is lambda I think now mean is np and normally we already said this lambda means average and it means mean so under poison mean is lambda if you now want to look for the variance as well the variance still remain as np guys take note it's still lambda take note and then it is only under poison distribution that we have that we always have the mean and variance to be equal that question you can never escape it one of you will surely see it. I'm be like that. They will tell you that which of the following distribution has its mean and variance equal? Option A, binomial. B, Bernoulli. C, poison. And D, normal. So you are expected to pick poison distribution. All right? So um, take notes. It's only under poison distribution that we have mean and variance to be equal. And then the standard deviation is only square root of what? Variance, which is lambda. So guys, that's how it works. So I believe you guys should have prepared a lot of questions for me now. This one, I'm, I'm, I'm even the one checking questions for you guys. <laughs> you <are la. laughs> guys, can you, can you hear me? Hello? I'm not surprised because I'm doing... Anyways. Because I'm surprised that I'm in the exam now. Take it to lower question apart from you. No, Allah, but it seems the up, you guys got the update late. I actually dropped it late, so maybe that's why. Anyways, um, I have another question here. I have another question here. So I just hope that we get the correct answer. Let's say it's going to be. And I also want you guys to tell me which of the... Network to to bear again. I started again. Can you hear me? Oh, 
Okay. The network is about okay. No worry, I've been in, I've that's covered back. Suppose a lot of you can still see my screen, right? All right, thank you. Anytime you come across percentage in word problem, just take note that that percentage tells tells us the probability straight up. During the writing this question is taking our time. I don't know whether you have your do you guys still have your test question with you? Like a screenshot or anything? Nobody. This video now I should have dropped it on the group so that we guys can just check it out together. But that's not a problem, Sha. Because there's no way you guys can actually multitask. You know, you are using your phone to connect. And you have to share my you have to check what I'm writing. And at the same time, you can't be watching video and then all right, no problem. So, guys, let's write out the options and let's see how this works. I can hear you. You want to say something? Go on. You can go on. You want to say something, right? Solve them. Like, I don't get your last question, the, the last part of what you said. Like, what do you say? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, go on, go on. I can hear you as well. Go on. So, you know what? Okay, you said you have a lot of questions with you, right? Okay, have you solved majority of them? Or you still have some left to be solved? Can you hear me? Anyways, if you guys can hear me, if you have any questions to solve, okay, probably, what time, yeah, what time is the exam tomorrow, sir? Is it tomorrow? Ah, wow. Well, ah, you guys still have time. Yeah, I got one. No problem. You know what? Okay, I even thought it's tomorrow, Seth. This is on Tuesday. Guys. This, 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 this is what we are going to do. This is what we are going to do. See, if you have, if you have any, if you have any questions, listen to me, everyone. If you have any questions to solve, if you not, whether test question or anything, send them to me or drop it on the group. Me, yeah, I will personally solve it and, and I will personally solve it step by step and I will send the solution to to the group. Now, my own question is, if I solve that question and I show step-by-step -step solution, will you guys understand it? Are you the type that used to understand, like, you used to understand a solved solution? Like, you go to, if you go to a solved solution, you can easily understand it. Or, you still need me to drop a voice note explanation for it. Which one do you prefer? Alright, no problem. So, just feel free to drop, you can just take the screenshot of this question, drop it on the group, I will solve them. Okay. Okay. So for me, is that clear? Yes. Okay. Okay. No problem. So um, let's continue from where we are. Okay. This is question number two, right? No problem. Um, in fact, I actually saw one question just now based on binomial, but I skipped it because we are already explaining poison as well. Okay. So um, this is the question. So um, suppose a lot of five hundred electrical views. You can mute. Hola, you can mute. Suppose a lot of five hundred electrical views contain five percent 
defective. A lot of huh, this in there, this is all why not. Okay, let's say this five percent is for probability. Let's say it goes this five percent is for probability. Five percent simply implies five over one one hundred, right? And that is zero point zero five. That's my p. What else do I need? I need my n. N is now the samples collected or the sample selected. Share grab. So it says if a sample of if a sample of five fuses is tested, that means I have my n as five. Are you guys following? Now it says find the probability of observing at least one. You see that they like her say for at least here. Yeah. Is that very certain? Okay. X is equal to at least one. And I've already explained what that at least one means. I have my samples and I have five five things to test, five samples to test. And I need to test at least up to at least one. That means I'll test for S equals to one, two, three, four, five. Okay. At least one coming from five tested sample, right? So that's ranges it ranges from one to five. That's for at least one. Do you understand that? Or do you still want me to explain that clearly to you? What if I say at least two? That would be two, three, four, five. If it's at least three, it will be three, four, five as well. Just know the number of samples that you are dealing with. Alright. So can you guys hear me? So is this question poison or Binomial. <laughs> Who can answer that question? You don't have to be scared now. Feel free now. Is what? It's not poison. Okay, is it because of the five thousand? Okay, wait. It's poison. Is it because of the five thousand? Five hundred. <laughs> because of the five hundred. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, you know. I'm very sure that. So that's why my end is five. Is my end that is my own target? It's my end, that's my target. So you see, they only they, they only give you this thing just to convince you. Just to convince this is my final electrical fuse. I'm very sure of that. But I'm very sure if I if I go ahead and use binomial, the answer will pop out. I'll surely see it. I'll surely see it. I'm very sure of that. I've not tried this question before, but I'm very sure that it will surely pop out. Because they also want to use this 500, 500 electrical fuse to convince us. You now end up using poison or any answer. That's one thing about them. They just want to use. So that's why you see five percent. That's for P. And your own next thing is to look for the sample taken, and the sample is just five. So that's why it's five. Forget that's binomial. That's binomial straight up. Don't stress yourself. So I'm not going to use the formula for um. See, poison is always direct. Poison, eh? They will just stay in the average. They will not stress you. I'm for average straight. It's very rare for them to give you N and P. Like you can only see just one. Based on that kind of question, like for them to give you n and p, and then you are not having that poison, whereby you now to multiply n and p together to get a lambda. So they won't really give you something like that. But look, so I saw n is five here, and I already said it that for binomial n is from zero to your x ranges from zero to to thirty. That means when n is thirty, if n goes beyond thirty, then that's poison. But n is still five, so I think we don't have any issue with that, guys. So let's use binomial. Let's try binomial. Let's say it's going to be. So for at least um one, is it that I solve for one, two, three, four, five by using the summation sign? Probability of at least one is equals to x start from one to five. Sorry, please. I think somebody just raises her hand up. I'm coming. I will attend to you soon. I have x start from one to five. What is the probability? Probability is zero point. Sorry, that's not what I'm supposed to write first. The first thing is write um n combination x. That's five combination x. Probability is zero point zero five raised to the power of x. And please, guys, take note. This was still given to us here. Hey, that that binomial sources and that binomial figure that I'm talking about. That it's actually I can actually see it from here. This probability is for defective. Okay, now the question did not ask me is also defective. So that means I have this probability as probability of success, which is P. And the question I'm looking for as well is also probability of success. 
So just use binomial success. That is, if this and this are the same, use um, if the uh, probability here and what it has to look for are still the same, as the saying the same thing, then use binomial success formula. But had it been here now, they said it's contained five percent defective. The question now says find the probability of observing at least one non defective. Do you notice that there's, there's contradiction? Yeah, it is defective, but in the question, they said find one is non defective. If it contradicts, guys, please don't use that binomial success formula. Don't use that first one. That is when you always know when to use the second formula. And you know the funniest thing? I saw that question in, but I think it's not it's not in your test. It's for those in sciences. That's math one, six, two. And they have done it, was it not on Friday? They did it on Friday also. I saw it there. Like the question, like I mean their test question rather like before then. Like I don't know, maybe it might not come out in your own, but you know, maybe that's how they used to. They used to drop marks for those science students, like oh, okay, oh, more So, but they don't really know the concept. So, if this one is defective and this one is showing non-defective, that is what an opposite. If you are seeing what an opposite, use binomial failure. But if you are seeing the same thing, no interchange of that um of the statement. If there's no any interchange of, in that statement, then just make sure that you use um uh, binomial success. I hope that is clear, guys. I hope you understand my point. Hello. So now this is defective. The question is also defective. So I don't need to change that formula. We just use this place as X. Abby, that's the way it's meant to be. But if it is the other way around, if there's an interchange in that statement, you swap that power. This one will be N minus X. You take note. So my formula will be 1 minus P, which is 1 minus 0 0.05, then N, which is 5 minus X. So guys, let's I want to press this on calculator and let's pray that. We have one of these answers. I don't know what's going to be the answer, Sha. But let's go for the best. So I have to I want to type this on my calculator now. So I believe you guys know how to press this on calculator. It's very important to don't go and solve it by hand. But when I use I may not top my own Sha. One to five. I'm already I'm already typing it on calculator now. Just hold on, please. I have five combination X. Please always remember to put time save I beg. Remember, I, I said it, I've said it already. Remember to put times. Take notes. Lock the times, so you get another thing in time. Or well, has anybody tried it? Or you put now a calculator? Better talk now. Hello? Is there anybody here that has natural addition calculator? Anybody? Oh my guys, this thing is interesting though. It seems we are flowing. We are just getting the answer. Like that's how it's just coming out. Network again. Can you guys hear me? Abdullah, can you hear me? Abdullah. Abdullah, can you hear me? The network keeps breaking. I don't know what's wrong. You can you can see my screen, Abby. So I said it seems to be guys are flowing and it's making sense. I just press it on calculator now and I have I have it at 0 0.226219 So if you approximate it now, that's 0 0.226. You see, it's making sense now. Very easy and sweet. This binomial. That means we've not seen any example of poison. I've not seen any example of poison aside from this. So I have to check. You know, I, I actually thought it was poison. I will not lie to you. When I when I was going through that video because of that 500 whereas after it are printing i noticed that it is what binomial from what from this n equals to five that's why i always say understanding matters you need to understand this the concept all right you know your own mind will first tell you that it's 500 and then you think it is poison whereas it's not poison um who is that you can go ahead talk for me you want to ask a question please make make it snappy so we can I don't know that we can still have this class tomorrow. I don't know. But Tofu me, go ahead, please. You want to ask a question? Tofu me. Let me just go ahead with the class. Guys, I want to I want to find out. Alright, so um I want to look for another question. Let's see. Just okay, no problem. 
So, um, all right, this is it. Guys, um, I noticed something too as well. Like all these questions, there are some questions that used to come out in this format. I remember, they would say that um, in a box containing seven green balls and five red balls, if two bodies drawn at random, do you know that kind of question? You you've come across that kind of question before, right? Like in a bag of um forty red. Let me let me look for one sample. I'm coming please. Uh, hey, I've, I've seen one question. It says a bag contains seven red virus and five blue virus. If three virus were selected from the bag, find the probability that two are blue and one is red. Are you guys familiar with that kind of questions? Can you solve them if you come across it? Eh? Anybody? Anyways, we still have a lot of things to do. Like, I'm not trying to tell you that, that there are some questions that I used to come with this from my whereby they will say that a bag contains seven red virus and five blue virus. If three virus were selected from the bag, find the probability that two are blue and one is red. Like, have you come across that kind of question before? Do you have any issue with that kind of question? Like, do you, do you guys understand it very well? I mean, very well. Okay, no, okay, all right. You know what, I think after this binomial, let's just end it there. Like, we are going to end it in that part, like for that um, bio, red bio and other stuff. Okay, in a bag of... Which part are you? Yes, you can go ahead, please. Yes, okay. Guide is how many? Guide, wait, guide is how many? Okay, uh, two, two what? Now, listen attentively. Do you have the options there? Is there option? But do you have the final answer so we can verify at the end of the day? All right, all right, all right just, just, just hold on, hold on. Now, listen attentively, everyone. You have five blue balls. See, if you can actually understand this clearly, eh, you will solve any questions based on that. If you have five blue balls, four green balls, and five red balls, okay, collate all the colors together and then find the number of sample space, like add everything together. All these things are inside the bucket, I hope you know. According to what you said, they are inside the bucket. So what's the total sample space in that bucket? You had them together, five, five, four. That makes it 14. Okay, so that means my number of sample space is 14. Let me write it clearly. The number of sample space in that bucket, they are all 14 in numbers. Done. But my number of blue ball is 5. Number of green ball is 4. Number of red balls is 5. Now, the question now says, that boy is to pick two I don't know how he actually said that statement. Two books. Read that. Read that for us. That's why I actually found two books. Can you, can you see that this, this is two books randomly? Without replacement. And. Yes. Exactly, see it. 
So that means what's happening that he's going to pick two green, one blue. Do you know that there are different possibilities for that? Different arrangements. So is that I have two green here, blue here. They did not tell me the exact position for picking two green, one blue. They did not tell me the two green is on the first and second or first and last. They did not tell you. So if you don't, that, that will arrange all the possibilities. So you see that I have green here, here, and then blue here. Or I have green here, blue here, then green here. Is that all? No. Or blue starts, then you have green follows, and then the green follows. Can you still have any other one? No. I think that's all. So let me write that for you. The possibilities are... The possibilities are either green, green, blue. Okay? That's two green, one blue. But is this the arrangement given to us that did not give us the exact arrangement? Or you can also have green, blue, green. This still shows two green, one blue. Yes or no? But just that is the arrangement that is different. Or blue starts, then you have the green for the second position and the last position. Can you still form any? If you form any other one again, you have a repeated um, sample. Okay, so I wish it's not meant to be so. So you stop. In probability, all means plus. All means plus. Now, what's the probability of picking this green? The probability of selecting this green is what? What's, what is the definition of probability? Number of that event green over number of sample space. Yes or no? That's the definition of probability, right? So what is number of green? Number of green is what? Four. That is four. Over number of sample space. 14. Are you guys flowing? So that is for green times, you know, they are all combined together. Times green and green and blue. Or I have green and blue and green. So and means times. So you have to connect this one together with times. I have times. Now I now want to pick another green. But remember that they said without replacement. That's it. They've given you the condition without replacement. Now listen attentively. So if you have a bucket now full of which is full of four green balls. One, two, three, four. This is green balls. Let's assume. I don't want to use that color. I don't have time for that. So um now I already pick one green. One green is gone. This is gone. It's outside from the cycle. Right? So now what's the value of picking this green? How many shares of green? Number of green. This to pick this green now, you know, one green is gone. I've already I've taken it off and I know you place it back. That is what we meant by without replacement. I already, I already took off one green, then I know you place it back. So that means I'm left with how many? Three. So for me to pick any green from this bucket again, what is the number of green that you have? You know, formula for probability is number of events, which is number of green over number of sample space. So the number of green that you have left here is what? Is three. In the case of without replacement, over the total. I'm very sure it affects the total. You know, I already removed one. Before everything was 14. See it here. Now I already remove one. That, that means I will be left is what? 13. Times again. Now, two green board is gone. That is, I've picked one. I've taken one out. Okay, this green board is out. I did not replace them back. That means two is missing. So I'm left with just these two. These two green. But I'm not considering green this time. I'm considering the probability for blue. What's the probability of blue? Blue still remain as five in that same box. I've not even touched it at all. Five. It remains as five. So the number of the probability of for, for this blue now will be probability of um number of blue over number of sample space. I think that's just the definition for probability. Number of events over number of sample space. And the number of events that I'm considering events B, which is blue. Number of blue here is how many? Five. And then I notice that the total. Two green balls are gone out of the 14 that I have inside. You know, I still have like, um, I still have five red as well. I have five reds. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So if we count all the totals now, make sure that will give us 12. See it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just normal thinking skills. Then I have this result. Or, then I have green, blue, green. Do the same thing as well. What's probably for green? But guys, I don't like to you. If you want to do this one, it's to still give you something like this as well. So I'll just advise you instead of you doing 
plus this one stressing he, instead of stressing yourself trying to get the one for green repeating the step for this you don't have to do that just multiply this result by three three times this result I just multiply by three all right that's how to do it but let's try it one matter the other green you start afresh again how many green balls do you have number of green that's four over total is how many 14 times blue is how many i've not touched blue at all it's still five but one green ball is gone the total remains to 13 i'll be left with 13 balls or 13 colors rather so then green one is gone i'm left with just three greens and the total green and blue is gone i know i know return it back and that makes it total of 12 left in that basket okay one of this one priority of blue is number of blue five over total 14 times for me to pick this green now blue is gone that means the total for that down part is 13. if blue is gone and i don't replace it that means this 14 will reduce to 13. see the total here now what's green green still remain as four in the basket because i've not touched that before if i now want to pick another green again this one is gone that means three is gone and i know replace it i will have it as i will have 12 left okay and then the green that i have i already took one green out so i'll be left with three greens so you notice that everything are the same four three five four three five four three five still 14 13 12 14 13. so it does not really affect under multiplication so just multiply this one let's see that you have two two plus two plus two is it what that that's two times three that's six okay so you can actually do it this way okay um guys i want to do this on calculator so i'll just press that and i'll tell you the result but i don't want to do it on i'll just multiply by three from here if you add everything together it's the same thing as when you multiply it by three take note i have three over 13 here and i have five over 12. so then times three guys if you add all these things together whether you add them together or you just take this one times three, you have it as 0 0.0824. Kindly give me the answer that you have with you. So I will know whether they actually make use of um because you also have um conditional probability. So it's possible it's possible that they actually make use of conditional probability in that case. Because they actually took a pause here. I think they did not take a pause before. What's the answer? Okay. That's just what they got. There are other possibilities. That is incomplete. That means what they just did was only for this one, and that's all. And they not tell us the position. There are other possibilities. You know, the question says find probability of having two green balls and then one blue. Right? So, they, so they, they not tell us whether two green ball is for the first and second position. And the last one did not tell us that it is blue. So it was not stated. So there is no way you can just do this and then stop. I've seen another question that states that the first and second color is green. So that means I don't have choice to take, I, I don't have choice that to fill this first and second with green. It's a must. Then the last one was now, I think that one was white. So I only did just this one and I stopped. Just like how you have it as 5 over 1 and 2. But yeah, they did not give us the position for these two green. They did not tell us whether it is on the first and second. By or Was it stated in the question that these two green are, must be on the first and second? Not my English. So it's not stated. Okay? Can you hear me? So I'm going to this 5 over 1 and 2. It's still incomplete. Because it was not really stated that we should use green green for the first and second. It was not stated in that question. So there are other possibilities too which makes it a complete solution. So the all makes it this particular answer here, 0 0.0824. Please take note of that question. All right? I think that is clear. So guys, you can use this one to solve any question. What I've just done here, you can use to solve any question, any question, just follow that same pattern. And I noticed that in the question for that, your test, I noticed that they did not used to, they did not used to tell you that, they did not used to state without a placement. They will not state it for you. 
But in your mind, guys, always use without a placement. That's just, they will not put it to. But guys, don't use, but guys, make sure you use without a placement for that question. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Most of the questions you're testing, you're test too. They will not state it. They will not even put with or without. Okay? If they do not put with replacement, if they do not put without replacement, if they don't even give you any condition at all, guys, use this without replacement. You see your answer. In fact, that is the correct answer. Sometimes if you use with replacement, if you use without replacement, if you do the two of them, you will see the two answers in the option. But whereas... Is that one of without replacement that is the correct answer? Okay, I've confirmed that multiple number of times, so take note of that. Um, okay, any other question before we proceed? All right, so like I said, guys, tomorrow, if you have any question that you have been trying to solve, you can drop it on the group, so I will solve it for you guys. I may even decide to drop voice notes. If I drop a solution, I will drop voice notes along with it, so that you not come and disturb me in my DM again. All right. Okay. Um, I think there are more. Which one again? Event. That. Okay, I think. For the for the color balls. This one. Okay, okay, good, good. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. And I'm still trying to look for questions on that poison before we proceed. I can hear you. Go ahead. Yes. You, you did not put how can you get probability as one point yeah <laughs> okay they play my fans you did not put that times abby that times i said you... no that's not where i'm going to put it now it's maybe it's after that five con after immediately after that five combination that's where you put times be silent you better correct yourself now <laughs> okay so please take note of that Always put the times in the right place. Check it now. Let me hold on. See it here now. Did I put the times here? No. Just after this five five combination X. That's why I kept the times. Okay. I don't know why poison question is very scarce here. See, that your test then is more is more binomial. Okay, it's more of binomial question. Guys, there's another question here. This is just like a miscellaneous question. It's not under your topic at all. It's based on how you can think. Just use your own critical thinking skills to solve the question. That's all. And you know the funnest thing, you might end up seeing this question in the exam or It's very, very possible. There is 60 percent chance that you see this question in the exam. 60 percent, 60 percent sure that you see this question in the exam. So guys, now let's reason this together. Yeah, just normal critical thinking skills. There's nothing like a topic or anything. Just think, okay? They said a two-digit number is to be formed. Maybe they did not put the word is to be. Maybe that's why you're confused. Okay? You can decide to say, okay, a two-digit number is to be formed. So that means 
for a two digit number to be formed, let's say I have the first one here and then the second digit here. I want to form two digit number, right? So I have the box here. Using the digits, so these are the available digits. I want to form two digits from all these things here. So that means I was given two, five, six, seven, three. Two, five, six, seven, three. Where a digit may be repeated. That means if I have two digits, I can I can decide to take two here and then put two two. A digit can be repeated, it's allowed. You can repeat that a particular digit for those two digit numbers. So, guys, listen attentively. What I'll just do is since I want to form a two-digit number from this set of numbers here, and I can still repeat them. The particular digit can be repeated twice, okay? So it can be repeated. Find the probability that the number form is a multiple of five. So I'm considering multiple of five. What are the multiple of five that you know? Multiple of five are five times one, five, five times two, ten. Like table five. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. So if you look at this thing now, if you form two digits from here, which one will give you this multiple with multiple of five? I'll just check it. Okay. I can see two and five. Wow, that's nice. One. Which one again can give me multiple of five? Which one again? Five and five. Because they say I can repeat that. I can repeat. I can have five and five. Just normal, just normal thing. There's nothing like topic for this one. It's just based on how you can think and you have to very fast about it. Another one again. Six and five. Five and three, no, because five and three is not among this list. But you can use three and five. Okay, three and five. You can use five and three now. Five three is not part of this list, even though you keep going. You can see five three. Okay, next guys, six five Abby. Do you agree with that? Six five Abby. And what? Seven five. I think that's all you can do. That's all you can actually pick for this condition is a multiple of five. What's the definition of probability? Probability of an event is always equal to the number of events over number of sample space. The event I'm looking for is multiple of five. If I clean this in and I write probability of having multiple of five, that means it will be equal to the number of multiple of five I have. How many numbers of multiple of five I have? How many are they? One, two, three. Four, five. That's five over sample space. Even though, even though you don't know the sample space, guys, this is not the correct answer. This is not correct. This is not correct. But this is correct. Okay, I got five. You still be wondering that, or oh, Mister Now want to scam us? Is he sure of what he's saying? Okay, show us the damn part too, so we can we can trust that. Okay, option D is correct. So how can you get the sample space? No problem. Let's start. This, the sample space tells us the total sample space of the possibilities. Whereby I can have two five, I can have two six. This one is not there. Two five. I've been now form two five, form two six, form two seven, form two three, form two seven, form sorry, form two five, two six, two seven, two three. Right? Is that all? No. I can still form two two. Based on the co condition may be repeated. Remember. So that's for two. I can have five two. Abby, I can have five, five repeated. I can have five, six, five, seven, five, three. Right? I can have six, two, six, five, six, 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 seven, six, three. And I can have the final one as three, two. Abby, three, five, three, six, three, seven. And three, three. These are the sample space. So I'm not considering this condition. Okay. So if you look at the sample space now, all the possibilities to form a um to form a two digits. These are the sample space. All right. These are the possibility that you can form using these numbers. So that means how many are they now? Number of sample. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. Against one, two, three, four. Wait to five. Wait to this one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's 25 over 20. It's meant to be 25. What, what are the other things? Is there any other one left? Do we omit anything? Yes, we omitted 7. Can you see that? Guys, we did not do that. 
You not, so if you do the one for seven, it will be 25. So do you agree with that now? If I include the one of seven, we forgot to do the one of seven. The one of seven will be seven two. Abby? Seven five. Seven six. Seven three. And then seven seven. That makes it 25. So I think that's correct. So option D is correct. Guys, do you understand that? Please take note of all this, all these small, small things, at least in the case if you come across it. This is why I explain it this way is because this question is of two different types. There is one that they actually said that it may be repeated. And there is one that they said it may not be repeated. Don't repeat. The digits may not be repeated. All right? So if you come across that kind of question, that means you remove this 5-5. Five, five. I've been now. Remove this 5-5. Five, five. It's only this 5, five that you remove. And the final answer, fine answer will become just 4 over 25. Do you get that logic? So that's how it's going to be in that case. It's taken to this question as well. So let's quickly move straight to ah that poison. I don't know. I've not seen any question of poison. But you know what? You guys should explore. Try to look for questions, and then if you if you notice that you have any challenges, just drop the message on the group tomorrow. Is that clear? Any question on poison? If you later come across it, just drop it on. The group. I will solve them. So let me quickly move straight to that normal distribution. For normal distribution, you only need to take note of um, the formula is not something that is really easy to cram, okay? But um, it is advisable that you know this main formula, which is z score equals to x minus mean over standard deviation. This symbol simply means mean, and this symbol means standard deviation all right and this mean is it i call it average as well okay and it's also equals to np this x is the score okay the score value given to us and this z is called the z score this is standard deviation this is mean um, for a normal distribution, normal distribution looks like this. So that you always have the x-axis and then the y-axis. And it always spread like a bell shape. It does no balance. Whereby this place is set of origin, Abby. This one is always zero. Okay? Set of origin zero. This is the average. Average here, which is the mean. Okay? Average, like the middle point of this graph. You see, this thing here actually looks like a bell shape. A closed bell shape. You know when you have a bell. I don't know how I can, I don't know how to do that. Okay? A bell shape. Show you graph. It always this this part here, this part. That's it always has a bell shape. Take note. And this shape here, this curve, is always what we call it mesocortic. That curve, let's call it mesocortic. This is the center of origin, which is zero. And you, and then you know for a probability, the highest value you can easily that you can have. The highest value is positive one. Okay. So um the z score value rather. Highest, okay. We have one yeah okay wait though that means we can have this as one for probability if you add all probabilities together or the region it must be equals to one that means if i want to look for that means for, for um, a probability if you sum all probabilities together if you sum all probabilities of random variables together the result is always equals to one it must not go beyond Okay, and then um, that means if I want to apply it here, that means this if this one is zero, I will have the distance from here to here as zero point five. The distance from here to here will be what negative zero point five, such that if I trace this line here and this line, and I want to calculate the region, the area of this region, eh? 
that makes it distance of what of one entirely from year to year is 0 0.5 from year to year is also 0 0.5 which makes it what one in total is that not one that's one so guys that sigma always take the one value sigma is always equals to one distance that sigma that standard deviation shows the deviation the spread for that area okay the spread that i shows the spread for it and that is one the spread is one but i noticed that the average is at what is at the origin the that means the average is only zero so you might come across a question that will say that in standard deviation which of the following is correct option a mean is one sigma is two option b mean is zero sigma is one so pick the correct answer always remember that mr noah said sigma is one the average which is mean is zero for that's for under um under normal distribution please take note too. okay take note sigma is always equals to zero and average is always equals to um sorry sigma is always equals to one and average is always equals to zero take note and the properties of a normal distribution is that it has a bell shape okay it has a bell shape all right it has a bell shape which is called mesocortic <coughs> And then another property is that it is a continuous distribution function. It is continuous. And this is why it is continuous because um, it has an infinite range for x. x ranges from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay? That's ma that makes it um, continuous. But let me just state that now. We have what we call the discrete discrete probability distribution and then we have continuous as well so how can i classify them for discrete for discrete um we have bernoulli is discrete and i'll tell you why it is discrete binomial is discrete and i'll also tell you why it is discrete this thing is in your question is in your test question they say binomial is dash i think they said binomial distribution is dash a they put discrete b continuous is there and they added one more other things like that you can check your test question instead bernoulli binomial poison is also discrete okay geometric is also discrete as well so i think these are the things i've seen so far okay but for continuous we have the normal normal is continuous okay and hypergeometric as well hypergeometric is also continuous And the reason why this bending is discrete is because the range for x is just 0, 1. Just they are discrete. They are finite. They are finite value. 0, very easy to calculate. 1 and it's very easy to calculate. Okay? Binomial is for 0, 1 up to a particular value n, which is also discrete. Poison is 0, 1 and it tends to infinity. Because it tends to infinity does not mean that it is continuous. So this thing tends to infinity. It simply means that normally you might say that ah, if they go to infinite, then it is it's not it's not continuous because it's infinite does not really imply that it is continuous. The reason is because even though you have 0, 1, 2, 3 to infinity, do you know that it is still countable? Do you know that, that thing is countable? It's just that you don't want to stop. Even though I keep counting 2, 3, 4, 5, if I get to 1 million, I can still continue counting. If I get to 10 million, I can still continue to count 10 trillion, zillion, and then as and so on and so on and so forth. It's just, it's just that I don't want to stop. So it's countable. Anything that is countable, we call it discrete. Anything that is uncountable, we call it continuous. Okay, so as far as this is zero to infinity, I can keep counting. It's just that I don't want to stop. Okay, so we always call this particular condition, we call it, we always call it um, <coughs> countable infinite. All right so as far as the word countable is still there forget you still call it discrete but for this normal distribution the range is always of this format and this one i don't know i think this range i think it's the same thing as that of normal also you can check your are, are you with your manual hello are you guys with your manual 
a hypergeometric function, check whether there is range for x. Check it now. And give me like the manual where you have hypergeometric, maybe there's hypergeometric distribution there. There is now check the range for x. Did they after I think I think they should they should have written the formula there somewhere around the manual. Do you see any range for x like something like this? Like what you have been writing for all these ones here. Do you see any range for hypergeometric as well? Have you checked it? You did not see it, have you? But is, form is the formula there? Is the mean there? Did they, did they give you the mean? Yes, the mean. The formula is there. The mean is there, Abby. What of the um the variance as well? The variance are standard deviation. All right, that's nice. So that means they did not put the range for the hypergeometric distribution. Okay, I want to confirm the range. That's why I actually asked. But why is it not there? <laughs> that man why is one two three and so on so that means if x is one two three and so on five hundred that means hypergeometry is discrete then but it's, it's countable okay that means it's countable where do you see it exactly Beside the formula, B, you, have, you have it as x equals to 1, 2, 3. Then that means, guys, that means that hypergeometric distribution is, is discrete. Is discrete. Can you take notes? Is discrete. I have to correct that once and for all. Is discrete. Please take notes. You actually take notes from the, you can actually detect that from, from the range. So you have to put it on. Take notes. Is discrete y because x ranges from one. You saw one to three a bit to infinity, right? So that means hypergeometric is discrete, not continuous. Anytime you see a particular distribution that has um, inequality sign, that makes it continuous. Just take note. Like exponential distribution. Exponential is not in your work, okay? It's not part of it. I think the range for exponential is s greater than zero or so. So as far as you can see inequality sign, what happens? That means what? It is um that means it is continuous. So as far as there's inequality sign. But what I want you to take note is these are the things that you must take note. All this was like they are discrete. Don't allow anybody to convince you. While this normal distribution is continuous, so I'm gonna close that door. So while the continuous um is for normal normal is continuous exponential is continuous we have a lot of them they are up to 20. when i was thinking theory level we actually show all the proof for all these distributions and it was 27 of them 27. we have really distribution we have the Cauchy distribution we have the rectangular the rectangle distribution also rectangular which is also called uniform they are much but for your level, you only need this, you only need this five: Bernoulli, binomial, Poisson, hypergeometric, and normal. So, guys, I also want you to cram the form, the mean for this one. What's the mean for hypergeometric there? Please state it for me. Let me write it out now. The mean for the hypergeometric that you have in that manual. State it out now. Because you have to master it now. I'm very sure you might see something like that in the exam. Okay, this mean can be written as expectation of that I said it the other time. Expectation that you have said expectation. Go ahead. Is there is it inside bracket x? Yes, I already know. So you can write this as you know, I said mean is also known as expectation. Remember, I wrote it somewhere. Hold on, please. Hold on. I wrote it somewhere. Somewhere here. Where is it? 
See it. Eh? I said this means expectation, or they call it expected value. Mathematically, they write it. They write it as ex. Take note. So is equals to what? You can go ahead. Is this small letter n or n? And did they use k? Times I'm listening. Over what? Is that all? So guys, the reason why I asked you guys to call it out is because in another in that exam, you might not they might not use MO. They are very funny. They can decide to use NK over N. So don't do it. This M can be changed. But you see this small N and this big N, they can they will remain fixed. But you see this one. They can bring in another letter entirely. Do you get my point? Do you understand what I'm trying to say there? Please take note. They can change that M. You can see it as NK over N. What of variance? Check. So I want to see what in it there so I can easily detect if they will change it or not. Small letter, right? Are you sharing your screen? Okay. I have to pin and I have to zoom. Okay. Um I can see EX. I'm only seeing that of EX. Come down a little bit. Up. What I'm what I'm seeing. I, I, I can only see. X. Okay, the formula is long. <laughs> okay, you know what? very long. You know what? I want you to okay n times yes, n. I'm coming n times m over n. Then I also have what? What's there again? One minus m over n. Okay, then I have um times n minus n minus one. All right, don't worry, guys. What I have here, the one, the way I used to write it, see it. This is the way I used to write my own. That's capital N minus the small, the the, the sample population or the sample trial. Okay. The down part will always be n minus one. Are you guys following? You put this in a bracket separately. All right. Then followed by that you know, in your own part, you guys use M. You are using M in the manual. But I think K is used in K is used everywhere. Most of they use K, alright? So we always have this as K over K over big N, just like you have it here. Alright? You close this. And then you also have the menu one as this one was N minus small N. Yeah, you now have it as N minus K. Okay, then over N. Now guys. You always multiply it by small n again. Now relate it to your own. That's your own. Call it for me again. Your own was. He started with one. With what? Small n. This is small n. Done. Followed by what? M over n. So where is it? Visit it, right? See the same. Next. 1 minus, which is still the same thing as this. Do you know it's the same thing as this one? 
Because if I split this one as n minus k over n, this one here can still be written as n over n minus k over n. Hope you know. n cancel n. That's 1. Minus k over n. Which is still k replacing m here. Alright? So then, times what again? Over n minus 1, have you? So you see the same thing. So don't worry, they will, they, they will not give you variance. You don't have to be scared. This one is too big. <laughs> but just get, a, get yourself, you have, to, you have to get yourself familiar with this. With the case, I the so minus. Yes, for the formula, yes, as well. And I'm very sure, even though you come across questions on that upper geometric, and they have to look for the mean, just look for the, sam the sample value given to you. The smallest, like that eight student and that 20 students. You remember that question? That means that 20 student will go for n, that 8 will go for this n. You see this? You see this k, this m here, they will give you separately, entirely. So just do it and then get your answer. It's only the formula that you just need. That's all. I don't really have questions on that, but it's just something that is really hard. That's why per geometric. And that for that normal, I'm not true with that normal. This normal, the way they used to ask is, is, uh, is that they will ask you to look for z score where x is something. They will give you the mean and standard deviation. You'll be given the mean and standard deviation for that question. Let's say, given mean to be 25 and x score is 60. Standard deviation is 3.4. Find the z score. Okay? Sometimes they will give you the z score. They will ask you to look for x. Alright? Sometimes they will give you x. They will ask you to look for z score. So that's how they used to change. That's how they used to change the terms. So that means for this question, z is equals to x is 60 minus mean is 25 over standard deviation 3.4. So you just need to go ahead and what? Subtract this. And that will give us 35 over 3.4. So divide that. Whatever you get here gives you your what? Final answer for Z score. That's all. Okay? And I ask, I said you should take note of the properties of um of a normal distribution. It has a bell shape. Okay? But at the same time, the mean is zero. And the standard deviation is what? Is 1. Alright? And that property is that it is continuous. These three things. I always have it in mind. Alright? Discrete are for binomial, poison, and um, bin. And then hypergeometric. Is that clear? Alright. I think that's fine now. That's still okay. So the only thing left now is just for you guys to look for more questions. So I believe you can now explore. Maybe tomorrow morning, try to look for questions. Ask your, I maybe I'll send you the videos. I'll drop it on the group as well. If you notice that you are trying to any question, even though it's not based on this probability distribution, aside from this one, and you are trying to solve that you don't understand, just screenshot it, send it to me. Send it to the group. I'll surely reply. Then I will solve it and do voice notes. I think that will be faster. So we try. This is already ten fifty five. So we need to end the class now. Um, this video. Yeah. Okay, I use a calculator now. Okay, press shift. Press shift, shift and um let me check that button. What's the button under that under that on button? Log log. If press it tab. Then this will display automatically. This is going to display. Then type it now. What do, what, what do you want to put here? Is it three? Five to what? <laughs> Five to what? Hope you understand this thing, Sha. I think it was three. How come is it five and one? Which question do you want to solve it? Are you sure? How can, how can, can it be 5 to 1 or 1 to 5? 1 to 5 now. 1 to 5. You should start from, you start from 1, then that 5. Abby? I, I see my screen. 
Like where where, where will you put that one? Is it at the top or at the bottom? Uh -huh. You put the one at the bottom, Abi. Uh -huh. That's what I'm trying to confirm. Put the one at the bottom and put the five at the top. Then press your five combination X. Do you know how to do that? Then press your times. I hope everything you are doing is inside that bracket. You know, there's a bracket initially. Uh -huh. So when you put times, you know what to do now. What's your probability? 40%. Is it 40%? Is it 40%? So guys, before I before I forget, let's let's check this together. There are some other videos that will help you to understand this clearly. I have them on my YouTube channel. Hola, Inka. Can you hear me? Have you, have you gotten it? Or you still want me to explain? Yeah, now, just... I said, what is your probability in that question? I've forgotten. Is it 40%? Is it are you sure it's 5%? Hey, what more are you? Are you sure it's 5%? Where is it safe? Okay, it's 5%. No verse. You are correct. My baby. <laughs> so, that's 5%. 0 0.05. Use power of x. Don't change that x. Leave it as x. So why do you put 1? Don't change the x now. The x is... Ah, okay. It will shock you. Don't change x. x starts from 1 to 5. Oh, Lord. Don't worry. It, it, it's going to program everything once and for all. You've already told... If I didn't study the calculator to sum, do you know, you know what you have just put in? You, you started the calculator to sum all values for x starting from 1 to 5. So make sure that you leave x here displaying. Don't don't tap out with that x. Don't put 1. Leave it, leave it the way it is. Then you put a 1 minus and then put 5 minus x here. Press equal to my fellow answer. Have you done that? The answer, okay. So, guys, I want to. I want you guys to look at this now. Let's check this out together. Okay, we are just six. We only have six people left here. All right, no problem. So let me show you this. Um, you can just search when you get to your YouTube app. Just search for mathematics. Okay. So you see, you see my account. See it. Eh? So when you click on it. You just go straight to my own just go straight to my playlist ah huh? is it on my playlist yes i think it's on my playlist just go straight to my pay playlist among all the playlist you see that of um this 302 you see your own there there should be math 106 and if there is no math 106 i'll go and look for it elsewhere have you seen that it's even there how many videos i'm very sure it's not it's not see it's even four videos so if you like yourself go through this night all right can you all hear me, guys? Can you guys hear me? There are four videos. There are four videos. Hold on, I want to reshape. Can, can you hear that sound? No. I have to stop. <laughs> I'm coming. I want to share this particular folder for that part so we can all see it together so we can end the class anytime soon. Can you see that question? It's based on this one, it's based on, um, I don't know, binomial also.
can increase the uh, equality. See it clearly. Okay. Rest I see it's very sharp now. Like. So we have like this here. The, the first one is seven minutes, four minutes. Let me just copy it. Yeah, I want, I want to share I want to share that exact I'll I'll paste it here now. I'll paste it in the message in the message box. I've dropped the link. Can you see it? So guys, um, that's all for now. You see this this um this record now. Okay, you can't see my entire screen. I want to stop the recording. It's two hours, 27, 27 minutes.